So my name is Heather Beam. Uh, my name is Nadine Bunkhard. And myself, I'm Aravind. I'm native from Sri Lanka. from 2010. My name is Elena Roska. My name is Catalina. If you were to summarize your message to the women in STEM, what could be that message? All in women should, should follow their dreams and not be limited by the fact that they are women. Don't let labels or stereotypes hold you back. I wish everyone can be more confident in yourself and uh, brave the bright future. Be a role model. Be a role model for and, and pay it forward. So seek out good. Uh, I really think that the, the choice of your environment where you can be valued for who you are is extremely If there's important. something that's a passion of yours or an interest of yours, to pursue it to and begin. not to... I think we have to dream big and take risks and believe in yourself. Those are my three key things and I think if you really internalize those three things in my view that will take you a very very long way. The future is female but the future is now you know. <laughs> Dream big, take risks and believe in yourself. So could you just tell us a little about yourself and your work? Yes. Um... Um, thanks uh, for the invitation to, to talk about our work and uh, uh, generally in terms of what we do, uh, uh, science engagement in different formats. And myself, I'm Aravind, I'm natively from Sri Lanka. I'm a co-founder of, uh, of a community innovation center called Dream Space Academy. And today we will have like a kind of a half-half session where I will introduce our methodology, how we uh, engage and empower people especially underprivileged youth from, from Sri Lanka uh, in, in different multidisciplinary uh, science. And also then we will go into the discussion of how, uh, what is our um, um, opinion and regional opinion on, on women in, women in, in STEM and in, in science. And uh, so, yeah, I will just um, go now into the, into the slides of my, about Dream Space Academy. So, as I mentioned, we are a community innovation center, so we really want to tackle like the environmental challenges, and then and with those challenges, we really want to just learn. So it could be a challenge or project-based learning. So uh, why we wanted to do that uh, is uh, so I was born in Sri Lanka and lived there for 14 years. Uh, 14 years uh, during the war time, so I was born in the war zone and then lived in war zone. So things were different. So when I left the country, I went to, you know, to live in different countries. And, and after 10 years of being exiled, after the war ended, I visited the country and I saw a huge um, uh, difference uh, uh, in, in the, in, so to say, in the, in the society. So one of that is, uh, is uh, pretty much everything in the country was imported because uh, 30 years of war probably caused uh, the local people to be dependent on international aid and international support. So uh, there was also, if you look at economically, that the, the negative trade balance, so a lot of things were imported, double that, double stuff, so it's like more stuff were imported than, than it's exported, and Sri Lanka has become one of the least innovative country in Asia. And so what I wanted to do is, okay, we need to change this, and I really don't want to, to, to be yet another international aid, so that way we could give some like money or things or stuff. So rather than that, I really wanted that the locals solve the local uh, challenges. And uh, since we are talking about very complex challenges here, like in our environmental challenges, it's not just enough to teach them how to code, right? You know, we are talking about multidisciplinary science here. So for that, we, we, what we did is basically we created a framework called Maker Education where we are teaching them to, to make anything from photography to, to, to biotechnology. And this, how, this is how we empower this young mind. And, and it's very similar to the IGM methodology that we don't stop there. So we try to find local challenge and we try to find an open innovation. We, we cannot just recreate or do fundamental research because we are a community innovation center and remote part of Sri Lanka. So we take whatever is in the open science and then we try to reproduce a solution and then add our contribution on top of that. And then ultimately, like similar to IGEM, like how we can create spin-off startups or social enterprises, which can actually solve also the socioeconomic challenges. And um, 
to to be more clearly on our legal status we are still a you know non-profit social enterprise we have to keep the balance between our missions like you know social and the business that's why we cover the whole spectrum and we are targeting mainly for the underprivileged youth uh, from war affected region in sri lanka and as of now with the support of you know international and local organizations so this is our life cycle we call it like in you know, a four stage life cycle uh, um so uh, i would just um, i would go with the the story one of the story that one of the person one of the, the young talent we have empowered here to go through the four stages and uh, um and uh, this person is a very young boy and then we will also look into like other other candidates who has been like you know in the in the middle of these stages so i would go with the story that covers the whole four stages and then i will uh, then you would better understand our methodology so when we uh, uh, so what we show here is uh, uh, sanjeevan when you know in sri lanka during the in the school time he has been part of the scout and he has been like you know so much about uh, you know protecting the environment and the social cause and then after he finishes school he decided to walk from the north of sri lanka to the south of sri lanka through the jungle in the forest and you know you know he was walking just to promote the peace and he, he was just 18 years old and at this moment we identified okay he's a very young talented person who wants to just give back to the society and the environment so we need to we need to basically like you know engage such people in science so that he can create more more uh, success stories so after he finishes uh, uh, this trip like you know walking from the country and then he also got another opportunity to, to climb uh, the 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 peak of uh, the elbrus the mountains of the peak of the continent of europe and um, and uh, yeah so you can see in a very young age he was really like engaged but however when he decided to to go back home and then he wants to start something and his family wants him to be a lawyer so because we this family influence we will talk a lot in the women in stem about sri lanka and the cultural barrier and it's not only for girls it's also for the boys and then they said okay you need to be a lawyer but he doesn't need he doesn't want to be a lawyer so he wants to engage and in, in the society and then solve environmental challenges so what we did basically we brought him in and then in the first stage what we call the maker education stage where he has been identified he has been trained with multidisciplinary workshops so starting from you know all we have multi, like in you know, electronics mechanics and you know life science and then business modeling and everything we have different workshops and then uh, what we identified that he really wants to work in a um, in an environment uh, uh that is you know to protect the water and the water resources because sri lanka is an island uh, with the seven times bigger exclusive economic zone that means that the blue economy is very important for us as as an island than than the green economy so we should be really thinking about like how to protect it which is not happening in the in the country so we decided okay so this is our like what you see in the map is basically where we are based on the east coast of sri lanka and we are surrounded by huge water mass and we need something that can actually provide these you know profile these water mass we cannot use some simple sensors here and there or we cannot just measure the algae bloom or like you know nitrate and phosphate agriculture runoffs which are like affecting the biodiversity of the water so we need to to have some device which can actually profile for long distance and uh, and then that's what we have identified one open source project which is an underwater glider one why it's from a boy from the US uh, and won the Hackaday prize for this and then so we we spoke to the contributor we took the project and we built up a platform on top of that so now sanjeevan uh, who entered this this program and then now he's in the second stage the community innovation stage where he's been like you know given an opportunity a little bit of you know income and then material and lab to develop his own ideas and basically he's fulfilling his wishes but we are giving everything what he needs for that as a salary and um, the next stage is that okay he has developed a prototype and then again he, he needs to understand what is more important uh, in terms of oceanology and water we don't have that local resources to teach him or train him what what he needs to know that's what the third third stage comes and it's also a very important stage for our topic the next topic the women in stem is incentivizing how do we incentivize people and the fam families so uh, uh so being in a community center like a lot of parents they don't want their kids to go there and they spend their life they want like you know like maybe fashionable glamorous life somewhere else in the middle east or some other foreign country than like you know really trying to solve a real world problem so we need to give such opportunity for our young talents to go out and and or 
some some international people go there to Sri Lanka to train on the domain that they are they are focused on. So that's how we uh, we applied. We requested this center. This is a is a is Plokan. This is one of the the biggest deep ocean research facility in the middle of Atlantic Ocean in Gran Canaria, and uh, and then he got selected to be to be there, and he's the only Asian who got selected to go there. Uh, to to train on the oceanology and to learn about all different types of underwater glider and and all deep ocean uh, so the ocean exploration. So what you see is that the the, the industry underwater glider, this yellow thing, which costs two hundred thousand euro, which would never be possible for any country in the global south to to do that. And our solution would cost two thousand euros, which is hundred times cheaper than, than than the industry product and so that we can enable a lot of people and give accessibility for a lot of people in science in different parts of the world with this platform. It's completely open source. You can just take it and reproduce it and upgrade it and repair it however you want. So the last stage uh, uh, is there is is very is very very similar to IGEM is that you know how we can now spin off spin, spin this off and create a socioeconomic development for the people who are involved and also create like an industry around it. And he has been he has been going around and pitching this idea to international aid organization and then he got already several uh, fundings and and uh, um, and uh, a green flag to start his startup. However, we have some issues because of this, uh, you know, the lockdown and the pain is closing the border. Probably he was supposed to go in October. We are not still sure how the, the government is going to react probably, but this is, is, this is how our life cycle works. So it takes like 18 months for us to identify someone and to bring them to these stages. And it's a one-to-one -one process that's very time consuming. And, and it's a lot of people on one side and maybe one to many. So the, the one talent and we have to put a lot of effort to train and, and bring them out. And uh, and it's all happened within before even even before they go to university or usually they don't have access to to go to university and so on. So so another story that I would love to talk here is is, is Abinaya and um, uh, um, she's in the in the second stage of our life cycle methodology. So uh, we identified her in only in, in in February and before the lockdown started and then we went to a, so. This is a huge difference, uh, probably in IGM or in other other make, other organization because you are like like an organization or a center. You're open and people come and then then you give them. This doesn't work in most of the place. We have to do the field work and we have to go to those villages and identify those talents and then only we can you know because otherwise they are stuck there. No one knows about you know what they can do. And then we were approached by her chemistry teacher and then there is this. 16 years old young girl. She she got really good, uh, you know, talent in wet labs and then the chemistry part and, and biology, life science. And then, so we said, okay, let's meet her. And then we visited her and then we identified that she really wants to solve bigger problems being in, in remote extreme village, like a forest village. And one of her, that her main project is that she wants to remove, you know, cadmium pollution from the water using this, uh, you know, uh, it's called Java plum, which is a common fruit in the in Southeast Asia, uh, maybe like Sri Lanka, India, Myanmar, and then some places. And then she has been using this uh, seeds of these, uh, um, uh, um, basically seeds of these uh, uh, plum or this fruit. Uh, and she's kind of creating a bio biofilter for that to 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 basically filter out the cadmium um, ion particle in the wastewater, which comes through like in you know, different pipes or something like that, and different industrial waste. And then we identified that, and we brought her in. I mean, still she's in her uh, GCAC oil, uh, so like you know her. 10th grade in other other words, so we still use the the British system, and um, um, and then we proposed we trained her. We gave her a little bit of a training on how to write, you know, scientific journal, you know, how to how to how you have to present this and so on with the help of our science teacher, chemistry teacher, and then we presented her project to 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 Stockholm uh, Institute of uh, International Water Institute, and she got selected now. As as the Stockholm Junior Water Prize, which is a is a prize that is given to like talented uh, youngsters in the water domain, and it happens in the town hall in in in, in Sweden where like usually people get the Nobel Prize, and she's the one among twelve uh, candidates chosen for that from forty countries, and uh, and then hope this year is again she cannot personally go, but we, it's going to happen like online and probably when things are okay and she's going to go. So this is how she enters into our system. Maybe she's a little bit jumped into the third stage already. 
before like had much work, but like she will also go through the four stages of dream space life cycle. So that's what uh, we, we call it uh, uh, as a life cycle. And then we have several other candidates, very young age, 16 years old, and you know, starting from that age. And sometimes we even have to adopt them because uh, three three young boys, we kind of recovered them from the the village, and then and they they told that you know I really want to learn and create you know impactful solution, but they cannot travel every day two hours in through this jungle and then come to our to a center. And they asked, okay, could we take them in, like completely adopt them to to be a part of uh, you know dream space and live there and eat and do everything, like go to school in the in the city in the town. And then we do that also because this is how we can retain the real talents because we cannot let them wherever they are and then we cannot just okay this is the this is what you have to do from sitting in in, in your jungle you know this is not possible so this engagement the social engagement of dream space academy is very strong and unique when compared to several uh, grassroots uh, uh, organizations or even you can call STEM team maker spaces different type of organization because we we are focusing on the social aspect a lot because which is more important in first place in, in the global south than that science and technology and so on that comes later right so as I said we have several labs where like you know different uh, age groups from six years old to 45 we have participants and then we have been training them on different things electronics mechanics and business and and an art lab and uh, and bio lab. We have a story lab, new lab, and we have been building our textile lab and our material lab. And uh, as I mentioned, there are several other community innovations. There are several other people in that life cycle in different stages. And um, and our, our focus is environment sustainability and take like open innovation and then like do a little bit of R and D and then try to find ways to locally manufacture. As I said, a lot of international collaboration happens, like a lot of scientists from Europe go there, stay there for four to five weeks and train on the topic that we requested for them. For example, if we need a biochemist, we usually request, okay, we need that, and then they go there and do that. It's not the, it's not the normal way that like people from here are sent to, to teach something that is not probably needed, you know. And uh, uh, we have been partnering with several international organizations because our methodology is very unique. And we have been even convincing like international aid organization like UN Volunteer, like Center for Peace Building and Re Re Reconciliation that this is open science for peace building, you know? So we have, we, in this way, we can actually gather some peace building fund to do like open science. And so there's some policy work happening and then we have different social enterprises creating different programs and um, yeah so ever every every entrepreneurship is based on like you know thinking about the society and and then try to find many industries and many factories in the local region so that you can also give jobs and skills to other people who are not part of of of, of green space so we kindly we have like like different locations and then if you see one is in the in the jungle and one is in the, the town and one is at the beach and uh, since the topic is also very much um, today about women you can see that very it's very diverse uh, you can see like you know there's a it's a pretty good uh, you know ratio here if you look at the team here and then we do lot lot and lot and lots arts you know we don't want to leave art behind because this is an expression for us that how a group of people sitting in somewhere can take a real world problem and you know in their own hand not waiting for an international organization or a corporate or government to solve and then we could solve it ourselves. So, yeah. So this is what we do. And if you, I mean, we have, uh, we have been working with very rural schools. So this is, uh, it's one of the, the, the school that we adopted with 104 kids. And if you ask these kids, you know, a lot of people, they have a lot of problem with the wild elephant conflict that, that uh, they, uh, you know, 85 people in 2019 died by elephant uh, attacks in Sri Lanka. And then uh, if you ask these kids there, you know, in this village where I adopted them, they say that every third kid would say that someone in their family died. But, um, but then we, we asked some of them, like, you know, one time we had a program, we asked them to like kind of make a painting of the ideal world and they still have elephant part of their, their ideal world. And, and the another part of the story is that 390 elephants died in Sri Lanka by human elephant conflict in 2019. 
So the solutions which are coming from outside world are not taking into consideration of the local, you know, the local ecosystem. And that's, that's, these people are talking about coexistence. So dream space and then our methodology is about co-creating that coexistence and by empowering them to solve their problems on their own. So this is mostly a uh, uh, quick, uh, maybe like a quick story of us and uh, yeah. So maybe we can now go to our discussion or if there is anything specific to this uh, dream space methodology also we can discuss. Okay, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, that was amazing. So I, I really like the fact that you guys have maintained a pretty equal gender ratio. So uh, that is pretty enlightening, enlightening to know. So our first question of the discussion would be, um, what is the I, what is the mindset in Sri Lanka about women pers women pursuing education, women pursuing se science, uh, and in general, women going forward and solving local problems, uh, finding innovations to solve local problems? Yeah. So um, yeah, this is uh, we are going in deep uh, into the discussion. Of course, what you see is a lot of uh, um, uh, different diverse uh, situation here. Um, yeah. So um, when we when I wanted to talk about this women in generally like gen generally about like you know our uh, th this topic, so I really wanted to discuss this with my team. So we have Sajani, who is a is a diversity and inclusion expert and and working on peace building and reconciliation, and then Nilavan, and 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 she's working from the north region, and then another one another can another my colleague Nilavan is working on the northeast, and then Kishore is on the east. So we I really want to get the whole. Uh, idea of, of of Sri Lankan Tamil. I'm not. I'm touching only the Sri Lankan Tamil part. I'm not touching the other part of Sri Lanka. Uh, um, so then, then I kind of uh, uh, discuss this topic, and so the whatever the opinion what we have is very specific to our community there, and then then it's also like based on like. Uh, uh, with my colleagues, what we decided, and I verified if that is that is how you think, and then what then they gave. So. Uh, I have like, I mean, I didn't prepare a presentation specific for this number, but the, one of the, the things that we always did with in Sri Lanka, we compare always to India. So what happens in India and what's happening in Sri Lanka because of very close uh, relationship in, in different ways, you know, cultural and so on. And generally, uh, in Sri Lanka, there is a very good, uh, uh, you know, balance in, in diversity, uh, in the uh, gender balance in, in, in pretty much everything. and even if you say that it's, it's far better in many places than in India, if you look at the Sri Lankan statistic, and if you look at the Sri Lankan uh, Tamil, that is Sri Lankan statistic and Sri Lankan Tamil community, if you look at it. Uh, um, so if you look at the population ratio itself, it's 51, almost like 52% female, and it's 48% male uh, in the country. And then, uh, um, uh, so attitude towards the women education is that uh, that uh, I'm also like I also lived in different countries so I can also like you know compare like how it is in Europe like in Germany and in India and then Sri Lanka so generally about uh, women in education is not at all a problem in Sri Lanka like if you if if you really look at the gender statistics you can see that like you know there's 40 percent male in science and 59 percent in women you know in Sri Lanka. And you can really see like the whole the whole education itself, like 54 percent women and then 45 percent, uh, you know, you know, male. So that itself is a very strong that you know the the bigger the top scorers of 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 uh, in Sri Lanka are always girls. You know, like we always say that these girls are like you know they they you know you, you cannot compete with them. This is how I I grew up there, and then this is how I know. And and uh, that's my, uh, in general, like, you know, we have also other statistics, like, uh, like if you look at uh, the people, uh, if you look at uh, girls who have graduated, uh, who have entered universities, like 71%, you know, than like, you know, boys who have been to universities and graduating. And if you look at, uh, uh, look at, this is a uh, yeah, population ratio. And if you look at uh, uh, teachers, you know, even if you look at the teachers ratio, like there's 71 percent female and 28 percent male, and then in the you know, in the whole Sri Lanka level. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, in, if you look at like you know, in in the schools, boys and girls in the school, it's like pretty much the same, you know, if you see and. Uh, um, 
Yeah, and also if you look at the literacy rate of the country, that is like you know really about 95, and then you know it's also pretty close uh, as to both both ratios. So uh, in in that way, I we we really don't see a problem that you know women uh, uh, you know going for higher education or basic education or you know because maybe probably because of the system that we have. Uh, um, it's 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 a very very strong when compared to the nearest uh, Southeast Asian countries. I would definitely say, yeah. And um, uh, however, there are like cultural barriers because Sri Lankan Tamils also have very very close relationship culturally to 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 all other Asian South Asian uh, um, um, uh, Southeast Asian uh, or Indian subcontinent countries. So. I asked Ajani, like, why do you think that, you know, like girls here, like, you know, they're like really like, you know, going pushing and serious. And she said that maybe this is uh, in Sri Lanka and in, in those subcontinent countries, we know that like, you know, we have to get married soon. So we need to achieve before that happens, like, you know, as much as possible. So that's why they are super serious about it than boys who are like lost in their, you know, they're in their bubble and so on. But there's a huge difference that I have to tell you that which Ajani also mentioned. It's very, very different from Indian society. The Tamil, Sri Lankan Tamil is a matriarchal society. So, so even if you could see the cultural wise in India, if you look at uh, a girls get married and they go to the boys house, but in Sri Lanka is opposite in Sri Lankan Tamil. Girls always stay with their family. The boys come to come home, boys come to the girls house. And then she told me, so Jani was mentioning, you know, it's very, very significantly you can see that Women, they are like really achieving a lot till they are 50, 25, 26 years old and they're getting married and then they have the family and then they have a very, very strong comeback after they are 40. Because now the kids are like kind of grown up and they are with their mother, you know, not with their mother-in-law and they, the mother, mother and the family of mother is kind of taking care of, because of the matriarchal system, taking care of the kids and they're really coming back really strong leaders have come out and then and there's a huge, huge uh, influence you can see. So these are the, these are the things that uh, the, the, uh, she, uh, Sajani and then we discussed and um, yeah. So I think like uh, we have to be proud of about it. And Sri Lanka has the first, uh, the female president uh, in the world, if you know that uh, in 1960s or 1950s. Uh, and and the, throughout the world, like when there was so much of uh, 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 oppression against women in the Western world happening, the global north and and from the global south, and the first female president comes to power, and she's uh, she, this is from Sri Lanka. So I think this South somehow it's in, in culturally in the country it's not something new, but there's also influence of the war uh, um, that you know a lot of uh, male they died and then most of the families and most of the houses, women, they are the decision maker in Sri Lankan Tamil society. And, and, and this is culturally and also the last 30 years of political system. Maybe. Yeah, I hope that answers your question in a big way. <laughs> yeah, that, that is really amazing. That is something I wasn't aware of. And it's interesting. Uh, yeah, we even didn't expect like this kind of answer. And it, it's a, a really great thing to hear about. And well, what do you think that other regions or even the region, uh, Asia itself, the region where Sri Lanka is, uh, how could they change their situation? Perhaps follow the example that you have on your country that includes more women in education. What could we do? On that, on that sense. Um, I mean, uh, still a lot to do with the what I mentioned is a lot to do with the with the cultural aspect and uh, and also the 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 social system in the country uh, um, that influences. So, which is not something that we can we can easily implement. So, I would I I, I wouldn't know because social challenges are the biggest challenge and how 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 you can culturally change in the families or the system. I mean, I cannot go to India and say that girls, you stay at home and the boys come home and they will beat me like, you know. <laughs> so uh, so the, I think it's, uh, it's maybe more of um, um, more of 
I, I'm not very sure, like if the the or the, the Thirty Years of War also caused this thing, uh, you know, to to amplify because uh, during the war time, a lot of um, um, males from the, the like you know the communities, the Tamil communities, were targeted, and then either they are dead or they are not in the country. So the women took care of everything, you know. Just uh, I myself, like I saw my father a few times in my life, you know. And uh, uh, so they all, the male was scared to come back, like come to the country and then women, they were just making decision and controlling everything in the society. Maybe that's, that's, that's my, uh, um, I would say that that's my, you know, it's, it has to start from the home. It has to start from the home. I mean, I have like few other words. Uh, 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 what my, what Sajani told me that, that the important aspect is inside, not inside, inside of the women the matters so we cannot deal this as a it, it cannot deal this problem as okay uh, uh we're gonna improve your whatever you know let's say that like we want to have girls doing like you know electronic engineering or by, by, by technology and then it's not about just giving them the 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 technical things it's about like how their internal feelings are about and she said that most of the time she has trouble uh, uh, like, you know, they're super nice and they want to do something. And if some kind of a small feeling or emotional or like insult happen, girls give up immediately, you know? And she said that you have to, so you have to look that, you know, then, then you have to look into those emotions first place, then looking into the tools and technology and platforms and so, and then, and this is what, what, what I would say from her expertise and from our, our, uh, uh, you know, integration programs that we have at, at DreamSpace. This is what I would suggest. Like, uh, see this more of as a, as an in, insight. Like, you know, it's more more of an emotional um, uh, issue. Okay, that is actually very surprising to all the other answers we've got. So, this is I, I really like how you're bringing in a whole new perspective to the table. So um, that's brilliant. Um, the other, the next question that we would ask you is, um, so now what is the particular incentive? So you also mentioned this in your presentation, right? So what are the particular incentives? Have you guys need to incentive, like uh, create speci special incentives to draw in more girls? Or mm -hmm. in general, could you talk about like the incentive system that helps to promote youth and even women specifically? to take up mm -hmm. and uh, to empower them to solve local problems and to empower them to like be an innovator. Yeah. So incentive is like the, the how do we, how do we basically uh, incentivize is creating more role models and superheroes, you know, like, so to say. And uh, if you look at, uh, uh, and, and another thing is that um, uh, Sajani was also mentioning like, you know, how we actually uh, 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 trying to create a strong women, like a role model. And um, and then uh, uh, I mean, if you look at even our uh, one of the problem that I, I maybe like didn't mention that um, uh, I don't know like if it's the same everywhere, but like Sajani was mentioning that it was throughout her like you know in our organization we have this problem as well, like you know how do we re how do we retain retain girls being part of the team and you see a lot of girls like as a participant but like being part of the team and taking ownership it's very less like you know so she was saying that always like uh, in, in our everything is very specific to our community and she's saying like you know they, they have this fear of like leadership you know like you know they would say okay if we take care of let's say we you, you, like let's say like let's organize an event or something like that and then they will say that you know they will step back and the boys will be always okay we can do that we can do that you know we can bring in and that leadership and then taking ownership is very less. So she told that the, the biggest incentive is like a little bit like, you know, forcing them, giving them, okay, this is your program. This is your event and you are responsible and we are there to support you. And then you have to go through that and you have to support them emotionally and like, you know, in, in terms of human resource. Other than that, uh, um, yeah, I think I covered like the incentives and the, the, another thing is like most of the time, they are not able to convince their parents, uh, uh, like every both boys and girls. So what we do is that we we take them and, and uh, uh, we go like um, home to home and 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 speak to their parents, 
other girls, they would say that, okay, look at the role model. What your daughter has done is a big thing. And then you have to like be appreciate and allow her. And, and this is one thing. And, uh, and also to keep, keep her within the network, uh, not to go to other network, which might have a different goal. So like keep her within the network to share everything within the network. And these are the, the actions also to say the incentives uh, for that, you know, they, there is always someone to support them, you know, emotionally, technically at home or outside. And uh, it is still, a, it, it is still a big work. It's tough. Uh, but yeah, it is doable. That, that is, that is great. Um, well, on, on that thought, uh, what would you say is your aspiration for education, especially for women? Uh, and well, especially how can um, can they be more included in education in general? Like you say, some of the problems and the initiatives, but like for the future, what is your vision in the end of all of that? I mean, in 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 uh, so uh, uh, in our society in terms of education we don't see that as a problem we have to like actively do it because we have pretty good uh, talent in what we do uh, uh, what uh, we don't have also because i studied here and my I, I did my research and masters in germany when i went to the to the german engineering university you see like uh, five or ten percent girls and like you know nine, you know 90 percent boys it's just like even they have a very basic opinion about like you know certain types of engineering is only for boys and because it, it involves brain and 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 like something involves heart should be for girls and in our society we don't have that you know if, if i studied i studied my bachelor's in india we had more girls in computer science than boys because all these girls studied biology and they didn't get into like, you know, medicine and they said, oh, computer science is so simple, we could just go and like type. Of course, they don't go for like, you know, mechanical engineering or civil engineering because they see computer science as a very soft thing. And even when I worked in my corporate job, we have like 45 percent to, to 45 percent uh, uh, women in, the, in that those corporate uh, uh, engineering jobs, which is not the case in the, in the global north, in the Western world. So... Western world need more empowerment in terms of bringing uh, 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 women, uh, girls into into engineering than than in you know in what I see in, in the in the south subcontinent because I have a friend of mine he has been um, he left his job and from Berlin he moved to like you know Bangalore to start a, a program electronics engineering program for 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 girls in Bangalore and he called me and told them. Bangalore is fine. He has to come back to Berlin to teach people to involve more girls. So I think, you know, and I think it's, um, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, so I, 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 in my opinion, we don't have to do much, but what I would love is that, you know, uh, 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 these empowering people, these young people, girls or boys, uh, what I would suggest, we actually have to empower the parents. That is the most important thing. If you empower the parents, if the parents are giving all that freedom uh, uh, to, 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 to girls to, to be like, you know, fail, you know, if the boys, they would say, get lost, you go do whatever, do you fail and no matter. But they are still like, you know, so protective of their daughters and then they're like pampering them and they think that they will lose, uh, like, you know, fail and they will have a bad time. And this this nest has to be broken in our society, but it's a very cultural thing. I don't know how we can do it, but uh, we see that it's changing in very uh, em empowered or emancipated parents or like very professional parents. They are like, you know, are loving. Um, uh, we have a lot of uh, young girls, you know, in very, very young, like six, seven years, 12 years, and their parents are like, you know, just sending them and they have to, they have to trust them. This is another thing because um, uh, uh, for example, like if you are running a program, like sometimes we currently run a program called Skills for Inclusive Growth, and uh, in this program, there we have uh, um, we have to train twenty now current twenty seven storytellers uh, in ecotourism, and this is a very mixed group, boys and girls. They are away from home from 30, more, almost more than three months, and they are staying in different places. 
uh, which is organ. They all are like almost under 20. And, uh, um, and these parents trusted them, these girls, because they know that they're going to go and mingle with boys and go in bus and the field visit and so on. And still they trusted and allowed, allowed them to be part of the such program, which is not, not possible in probably in India most of the time, or I don't know. And uh, but in our society, it is possible. But we need to make it ha- make this happen more and more. And uh, and this is uh, this is what I would say. Uh, 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 yeah, my my co-founder said that the freedom of practice counts here. You know, we we need to let them to to fail and succeed than like you know pamper. Um, girls uh, too much, you know, that we should give the same amount of uh, freedom as, as is given to boys. Yeah, I think uh, I think the par- empowering the parents is actually one of, like, a point nobody would think of. We would always talk about the children, but yeah, empowering the parents seems the, the best way to get more kids involved. Right, so actually that's quite a few, you've mentioned quite a few solutions that one can actually use out in the society. Uh, we're very glad to have your perspective and I'm glad you covered both the East and the West. So the final question we'd ask you is if you were to, in one sentence, if you were to give out a message to say the women or even like the men, the young innovators pursuing STEM, what would it be? Um... I mean, uh, we we we, I, we kind of wrote, with this uh, discussion with my colleagues, we wrote down three uh, like you know okay. logo like whatever, and one of that is is the inside inside side, yeah, not the inside inside of women women matters for their existence, and uh, what she wants to say is, is the internal judgment is very emotionally have to take care of that, don't let her feel insulted, so always solve that I- immediately. And uh, my uh, other colleague said that the freedom of practice um, uh, counts. Yeah, but it means that failures of boys are accepted, but girls are pampered too much and they don't want the families in, in our society, they don't want. Uh, my, I would be like in a little bit, uh, you know, punk, I don't know what the, the future of, future is female, but the future is now, you know. <laughs> so I would say that uh, uh, it's, um, yeah, in my opinion, I mean, I mean, I, I, for me, like you know, we we don't do like oh, so much a very gender gender based uh, work because we are talking about empowering unprivileged people. It doesn't matter which ethnic group, which gender group, because there was a war for thirty years, and now we are talking about the very fundamental things of survival. So, uh, and this is very specific to our problem. But every everyone out there, if you wanna, if you think that maybe it's different from probably in Europe and different, so you always have to localize your action. You know that localization is important. Maybe like it is very important to empower and like you know bring more of a, you know like you know strong different different actions can be done in different parts of the world. And but you need to know what is important for your society at that moment. And I, I'm happy and proud that Sri Lanka is in the right direction. And uh, so, yeah. But still, still, it should be always, you know, we need to make, we need to have an eye on that so that it goes wrong, you know. Great. Uh, that would bring us to the end of the session. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. And thank you for showing us the other side of the story. Like. I think that's the first time I've seen the ratio so supportive of girls and not supportive of boys. So, but hopefully we could bridge the gap and get it back to 50-50.